Hello, welcome to Kaijo Tutorials. Today we're going to continue the simple inventory tutorial series. This is part 5. Please join me in this journey. Today we're going to create the routes for the brand management as well as define the basic structure for um, categories and locations as well. To keep the videos between 10 to 15 minutes, what we're going to do, we're going to break the brand's management section up into at least two videos. So what's going to happen in this first section is we're going to add the basic structure for the brand's management as well as create the model. Then we're going to um, create a test condition to test that we are able to access the brand management as well as creating the create method route. Then in the next part of the series, we'll go through the update, retrieve and delete methods for the brand management. So one of the first thing that we have to do is export the router, which is very important. And we are defining to, um, to say, say to the file, the um, project that this this particular file needs um, express and we are defining the router which is a method within express we are also defining all the libraries that we'll be using in the future such as the bsync and crypto which is used for encryption and decryptions Next, we're going to um, call a special method within SQLize called query types. Query types is used to give us a capability such as greater than, less than, um, which is very important, especially when you're doing filtering, search filtering. Next, credentials. In the previous video, I defined what credentials were, but um, for those just joining the series, credentials table has all the credentials needed to um, communicate um, with the database so we have placed it in a singular file so that we can change it update it without having to change it right throughout the entire project So what we're doing is initializing the routes because server.js acts as the, en the entry point into the API. So we have to tell, tell Express that, hey, we have other routes within the project and this is how you find those routes. So that is why we say require and the location of the route. In our case, it's inside of the routes folder. I have also taken the liberty to actually um, define the categories and locations management routes, which we'll be defining later on. Next, we'll need to tell, tell Express that we must use the following um, keywords or um, slug to, in order to define that particular route. So we can define it to be almost anything. So I choose to say that um, in order to find a route, we'll have to say, um, we'll have to enter the domain name slash the API slash the, the name of the route slash the method that we're trying to reach. So now we're going to create a test method in order to verify that we are able to successfully get to this particular route before we try to add the CRUD methods because it's always good to test as you develop so that you can find bugs earlier out. So we're just going to put a simple message saying um, brand management test so we know that we have success reach there 
um, we tried to run it and it failed saying a middleware. So remember we had defined two other things of categories management and brand management. So brand management. But the problem is a location management, but the problem is we did not define the route. So it's looking for for a, a express file, a Node.js file, but it could not find it. So we had to do that and export it. So we have to do the same for location management. So do not define the file if you're not ready to use it. So to run it, we use the keyword node and the name of the endpoint. So now we're going to use Postman to try to test the route to see if the route is working successfully. So we put in the slash and then the name of the endpoint. It failed. The reason why it failed is although we had put the, the domain slash API, if you look inside of the server, um, we don't have that. So we have to sometimes debug to see, visually debug to see wh what we went wrong with. So if you notice there, there's no slash in front of the API. So I'm putting the slash in front as well as a slash um, on the method. And I've decided to remove the slash from the ng point. I could have left it, but I just decided that it would be easier for me to follow. Okay, success. Next, what we're going to do, we're going to create the model. So the model is what um, SQLize uses to map, to map the objects to that of the database columns and tables. So it's very important that you use the same or similar um, variable names and types in order to successfully map the, the um, structure, the database structure. But there are also, if, for example, you can, you can actually map it manually somewhat. So what I mean by that is if, for example, inside a database, you track the timestamp by something a column called um, record timestamp, then what you can actually do, you can actually go into the system. You could actually define to say, hey, um, timestamp, which is sorry created at which is a sequelized um, special key um, special variable which is used to store the created at time or the timestamp you could actually say created at and say that 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 created at is it maps directly to um, record timestamp So this is a simple model. So we are only um, storing the brand name, brand, the brand ID, and the is deleted. So as you can see, we have to define the type, and in this case, it's a U, UID, which directly maps to unique identifier. We set a default value, as well as say that it doesn't allow any nulls, and it's a primary key. So the default ID UUID 4 it means that it will automatically set the primary key for you so now that we have created the model we are now trying to create the create method so we're defining the create method so what we need to do I'm, I'm copying the, the headers 
so the headers is so that we are able to accept different types which is very useful especially when when you have a web interface that has cross that is doing cross requests um, cross site requests so in order to create the method once you create the model all we have to do is say brand which is the model name dot create and then we say that we take the request body that is sent and we send it to that model and sequelize handles everything else the mapping so that's why I said it's very important to map to map the model to the database table as closely as possible and then we return a copy of the record that was just created the write-up and the next part of the tutorial series will be released soon